Hello and welcome viewers and subscribers of AVG News. My name is Olisi, the son of Nube, and I hope I find you well wherever you are. Uh, we know that today is the 23rd of August, 2023. It is a big day for Zimbabweans, uh, especially those who are based at home, because it is a day when all hopes lie on them to fix what we have been failing to fix for the past 43 years. The onus is on them to try and correct the mistakes that we've been making for the past 43 years. The onus is on them to decide the destiny of the country for the next five years. Those in the diaspora have done all they can. They have kept the country afloat in terms of their remittances. They have kept the country afloat economically by remitting billions of dollars, American dollars, to the country every year to make sure that despite the mismanagement that is there, despite the Western sanctions that are there, the country doesn't get to an ultimate collapse. So those in the diaspora as well have contributed immensely towards democratizing Zimbabwe, towards changing the government in Zimbabwe, towards making sure that those that are working towards change in Zimbabwe are kept oiled in terms of financial and other resources. We know that the main challenger of the status quo, Mr. Nelson Chamisa and his Triple C party have done whatever they have because mainly the Zimbabwean diaspora stood up to be counted. They remitted, they donated to the party via GoFundMe, they donated to the party via direct remittances to the party, via raising several resources which made it possible for Mr. Chamisa and his party to roll out those campaigns that we saw to buy regalia that we saw being distributed to the people to make sure that every possible action by those at home came to fruition. So the diaspora, because it has been denied the right to vote in their foreign bases, did its best by funding the revolution back home, by funding the main challenger back home, and by advocating for further reforms and further space, democratic space, as we head towards the elections. So the duty of the diaspora is done. But now we also uh, saw the diaspora running a serious propaganda war on social media, especially because we know that the internet back home is unreliable and can be blocked anytime. So the diaspora has done its best in as far as trying to democratize Zimbabwe is concerned. Now our hopes lie on those that are at home. Today is the day set aside for this plebiscite where Zimbabweans are voting for their local councillors they are members of parliament and they are presidents as well as senators. We know what we've gone through during the past 43 years. We know what we've had since 1980. We know that it is incapable of reforming itself. We know that it is incapable of running the country. It is incapable of giving space for freedom of expression, of giving space to democracy. And we cannot continue on this path towards further self-destruction. Some of us are based in the diaspora. We wish we could be allowed to vote, but we have been denied that vote for a country that has been independent for 43 years. It is an embarrassment that one uh, hundreds of thousands of people 
have been forced out of the country by the economic malaise, while tens of thousands of others have been hounded out of the country for practicing journalism, for expressing themselves, for challenging the status quo which is failing. I know many of you are, have already voted, but there are still others who are yet to go to vote. If you are a registered voter and you are in Zimbabwe, please don't sit on your laurels. The day is today. This is the day when you are supposed to shape the destiny of the country. Do not buy into prophets of doom who say that even if you vote, your vote will be stolen. That doesn't exist. This is the time for you to stand up, go and cast that vote. And please, as you vote, don't think just about yourself and what you got yesterday from those that were campaigning. Think about the future. Think about the next five years. Do you want to see Zimbabwe still where it is right now? Do you want to see your relatives remain out of the country because it is unlivable at home? Do you want your children, think about your children and their great-grandchildren. Do you want to leave this toxic sludge for them when you depart this earth? Let's think about creating a soft landing for our children. Let's think about creating livable conditions for our fellow citizens who are outside the country and those that are yet to be born. Don't be intimidated. Don't be afraid. Don't be dissuaded from choosing what is right for the country, which is also what is right for yourself. And we know that this election, just like any other we have seen before, is a two-horse race. It's either ZANU-PF continues to misgovern, to maladminister, to loot, to suppress, to intimidate, and to kill, or Triple C takes over and hopefully delivers a new Zimbabwe that we all want. So it's either ZANU-PF or Triple C in which ZANU-PF represents everything that's bad we've seen in Zimbabwe since 1980. It represents mass matters via Kukura Wundi. It represents uh, mass matters via Operation Mavotera Papi. It, in, it represents intimidation and harassment as we saw via um, Operation uh, Manu Konde. It represents destruction, utter destruction, economic destruction, and impoverishment, as we saw via Operation Mrambatwina. It represents displacement, as we saw in Shilonga and other such areas. It represents racialism, as we saw during the so-called Operation uh, agrarian reform that they called it agrarian reform it represents looting as we saw again during the so-called agrarian reform it represents uh, economic destruction as we saw during the, the racist and politically motivated uh, land grapes since 2000 it represents sanctions as we saw via the Zetera and other measures in 2001, it represents squander of resources as we saw during the intervention in the TRC war. So at the end of the day, this is the day when we have to choose between that and the new hope that Nelson Chamisa and his party carry. If you haven't voted and if you have been developing cold feet, think about the next five years, do you want to continue as you are? Are you happy with your situation right now? If you are not happy, then stand up and be counted. Stand up and go and vote for change. That said, uh, we have seen some political party leaders drunk uh, with their insatiable hunger for power telling you to not leave polling stations after voting. 
and I would advise you against that. Your only duty is to go there, cast your vote, vote wisely, and voting wisely means voting for change. Voting for change means voting triple C. After you've done that, go to your home, wait for the results to be counted. And after the results have been counted, let's hope those who do the counting will do it as they received the ballots, as the ballots were cast. But don't be used for political expedience. Don't be used to feed political hunger. You don't have any duty to stay at the polling stations. You don't have any duty to fight for any political uh, party or political leader or political ideology. No political party, no political leader, and certainly no political ideology is more important than, one, than your life. We saw what happened in 2018 when people were shot brazenly by the soldiers for trying to storm the ZEC offices before the announcement of results. And we know that those who died were forgotten only to be remembered during political campaigns, again for political expediency. So we don't want any more bloodshed. We want to conduct this election in peace. Let's wait for the results to be announced, but only after casting our ballots and casting them for change. Other than that, the rest is not up to us. Even if you stand up, even if the elections are stolen and you stand up, at the end of the day you are going to die and those that you are standing up for, those who are influencing you to stand up, to get killed on their behalf, will not be there to look after your families. And I'm saying this from experience because I am a journalist and I've interviewed a number of people who lost their relatives, who lost their breadwinners in the process of trying to attain democratic change and they've been forgotten by those who lead them. So, just go out there and vote, do it peacefully, and then go back home and await the results. If somebody says, stand up, march to the Z offices, and you realize this is a, a life-threatening situation, which it always is, don't take heed. If somebody wants to lead a march to the ZEC offices, they must be at the front not peering down windows. So, Zimbabweans, let us go and vote en masse and let us vote for change, hoping that the change that we seek will be delivered. Thank you very much. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel, like this video, and share it.